So you might have noticed that I've turned this camera around. That's mostly because I like the way my face looks here and I get to brag about reading books. So I'll be seeing you from this angle from now on. Anyways, I have been having <laughs> very extensive and heated discussions with people about Eidos. And for those of you who don't know what Eidos is, it is a descriptor of a very specific group of Americans in the United States, as well as a descriptor of a very particular movement within the American zeitgeist. So for the individual, Eidos is an African-American descendant of U.S. chattel slavery. And in turn, the movement is to promote, and I am assuming in-game, acquire reparations and compensation from the United States government for those descendants, right? Now I'm saying I'm assuming because I am not, I don't identify as Eidos and I'm not a part of the Eidos movement. And I will be honest with you guys, me and Eidos individuals in that movement don't like each other. A lot of our discussions are very disrespectful and very mean because we don't see eye to eye on things. They consider me a dirty little child of an immigrant who has not done anything for this country or black American culture. And I see them as American xenophobes who are essentially rapping fascist rhetoric in a black face and trying to get money or use slavery to hide behind their bullshit. Now, I will be honest, on the flip side, I have had extensive conversations with several people who self-identify as Eidos, or, and they may or may not be attached to the movement, but we have had very respectful and illuminating and very informative conversations that have helped me to contextualize this particular hangup that I have about that movement outside of the visceral reaction that I get from just seeing the American flag and that fucking hashtag in some of their fucking bios. You know what I'm saying? Now, from what I've gathered, in order for you to say that you are an Eidos individual, you have to be an African-American. So all you racist motherfuckers who say that Irish people were slaves, they don't count. You have to be an African-American who can trace their lineage as far back as 1619 or at least four generations back within the chattel slavery U.S. system, okay? Now, I say U.S., they, for the most part, mean the continental U.S. Um, so if you are a Black Puerto Rican or U.S. Virgin Islander who very well have, you know, a slave ancestor who has been you know, on that U.S. soil well before fucking 1619, you guys don't count, despite the fact that both of those islands are U.S. soil because you are outside of the continental U.S. And I'm also guessing it's because of when the United States acquired those islands. I'm not sure why they've made that arbitrary fucking rule. I've only come across Eidos people who just say that they don't count. Now, that's not to say that there aren't Eidos movement members who do consider you. Eidos. I'm just saying, I haven't found them niggas. They seem like unicorns. Anyways, I digress. So, if it's because, like, if one of the rules, one of the rubrics is that it has to be, you have to be a descendant of slaves that were in the U.S. slave system in the continental U.S., this arises a problem that I've noticed, all right? Now, let's say the United States is willing to sit down with the Eidos movement leaders and really suss out and discuss reparation and compensation and how to disseminate that to Black descendants of these U.S. slaves, right? Now, prime example is Louisiana. Louisiana is full of black people. I don't know if you've noticed. And a lot of those people have had a lineage, a lineage through on that land for well past four generations deep. Problem is, Louisiana itself has not been a part of the United States for the same amount of time. Now, crash course, quick 
U.S. history lesson for those of you who don't remember or don't know. Louisiana did not become a part of the United States until 1803 after the or during the Haitian Revolution, which, you know, are my people helped to make happen and all that shit. You would not have the Louisiana Purchase without Haitians, but whatever. Fuck it. You know, my people don't contribute to this country or whatever the fuck. I understand. That is a fucking tangent. I'm sorry. I digress. Okay. Louisiana. Louisiana Purchase. 1803. All right. United States. Now, slavery in the United States did not end until the 1860s, okay? So what is to stop the United States from saying, okay, we will compensate black descendants of slaves in Louisiana, but we are only going to pay for whatever percentage that 60 years comes out of the 400, right? Is that an acceptable term for Eidos movement members or would you combat that would you say no you need to compensate for the whole time and would you be right to do that because i mean let's face it the majority of that slave labor that was stolen was sent to and benefited for the french not the united states so would we have to force them to do that or would you accept those terms and then just create a smaller Eidos movement geared towards forcing the French to pay for the rest of the reparations that would be owed to those descendants of slaves that were in Louisiana. From my understanding, the French had that territory since 1603, so they probably deserve a little bit more money, you know, adjusted for inflation than let's say they happen to be slaves in North Carolina. Now, speaking of that, another fucking term or another fucking thing that I would notice that the United States might ask is saying, hey, we only became the United States and only had a U.S. slave system by 1776. Anything before that was a British system. So we're not going to compensate for anything earlier than 1776. So you will only get money from 1776 down to the 1860s for the people who can prove that they have this lineage, right? Would that, again, be a term that would be acceptable? Would you argue that that doesn't um, qualify because the same slaveholders that were part of the British colony in turn became the U.S. colony, which means that they had benefited from this system well before and that doesn't count? Or... Would you accept those terms and again create a smaller you like a smaller Eidos movement to fight to cover the rest of the reparations and get it from the United Kingdom? How does that work? Um, again, flipping back to Louisiana, there are quite a few people, the Creole, as y'all as y'all like to brag about with Beyonce and shit. And there also are in Southern Texas of Creole individuals who very well may not have been connected to um, Louisiana slaves at that time. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole system within Louisiana called Plissage, which gave rise to a lot of black individuals who are dis are. Um, progeny of French slave noble or slaveholders and free black women who gave birth to free black children who have gotten, you know, education and all that stuff. Do they count? How can you tell they don't count? What percentage of the reparations do they get if you can find lineage where there is a slave somewhere? I mean, because obviously there's going to be a fucking slave in that family's lineage, right? So how do you prove that? How do you calculate the percentage of reparations that need to go to that individual, right? How does that work? Um, would that cause a chasm within the Eidos movement? I mean, let's face it, the Eidos slavery lineage is not parallel for everyone in Eidos. I don't know of any Eidos person from Louisiana who doesn't consider themselves Eidos, despite the fact that their ancestors were only part of the American slave system for 60 years. How can you tell that person, well, you only deserve 60 years out of the 400? 
Does that work? Do you ignore that? Is that something that you guys just work through? Have you guys even talked about it? Is that something that you guys even worry about? You know what I'm saying? These are the things that um, have come to mind during these conversations that I've had with ADOS individuals. Um, and I really haven't gotten um, any real decent answer um, about it. Um, it doesn't seem like ADOS individuals and neither ADOS people who are within the ADOS movement have really thought about the shifting geography that has happened over the course of those 400 years and further. You know what I'm saying? Again, why doesn't, like, I get it. You could say Puerto Rico don't count because, you know, it didn't really become part of the territory until like, you know, late 19 da da da's and all this other shit, despite the fact, you know, like, but what about US Virgin Islanders? They were also part of the very same slave, the British slave system that the rest of the colonies were a part of, meaning the rest of the colonies got to benefit from that slave labor, just like they got to benefit from each other's slave labor because they were all trying to benefit the United Kingdom. Why can't they count? Simply because the United States, like if the United States making Louisiana territory in 1803 doesn't matter, those people still count as Eidos, right? Then why, if it doesn't matter, when the people had lineage to the land or when the country existed while the people had lineage to the land, then why does it magically matter with U.S. Virgin Islanders? You know, that doesn't seem right to me. You know what I'm saying? The United States is an empire. Also, what about the fact that this, you know, the U.S. slave system wasn't an insular slave system? Pretty much none of them were, you know, the slave masters and the imperialists were um, globalists, you know, they believed in globalization in that fucking sense. So they traded with each other. They traded slaves with each other. They traded products with each other. They traded uh, the fruits of that labor with each other. Right. So especially with the United States being on this Western Hemisphere and being the strongest imperial power within this hemisphere it played a very large role for a lot of slave systems outside of itself, namely places like Jamaica and Haiti and Brazil, so on and so forth, Cuba, you know, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, like the slave system in the United States was not happening within a vacuum or an island amongst itself. How do we negotiate and discuss the reparations for that? Why does it have to be separate? Would you accept the argument from the United States if they were to do this? They would also certainly say, well, we're going to do all reparations or fucking none. Like this nitty gritty shit y'all need to figure out. Are these things that have come up within the Eidos movement outside of like just going out and like harassing, you know, people who don't self-identify as American because they don't have an American flag in their bio and shit. Do you guys really do sit down and have these discussions to see what does reparation look like? How do we suss this out? There are things historically about chattel slavery that changes a lot for a lot of people. There, there could be people who are completely left out or don't get as much. Is that fair? You know, especially because you don't say to a Louisiana person, who is connected or who has a ancestral tie to Louisiana, well, you're only like 60, 60 out of 400 of an ADOS. You know what I'm saying? Like it's either all or nothing with these people. So who gets to make that choice? Who gets to say that like within the movement, who gets to make that decision? Who gets to dictate that? Who has thought about it? If it's ever been brought up, all that good shit. Um, by all means, you know, Give me your opinions down in the comments below and all that good shit. Again, like I usually say, I may or may not fucking answer you because it just depends on how annoyed or validated I want to feel at the time. But either way, your comments are appreciated. Uh, chances are I've probably seen them, all of them. Um, and um, yeah, if it hurts my feelings, I'm just going to masturbate, take a shit and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Have a great day, you guys.